So in today's episode, we're gonna build an ambient techno track from scratch. I try to keep these videos as DAW agnostic as possible. I'm using Ableton Live 12 here. Feel free to follow along in any other DAW of your choice. And I've got a full PowerPoint plan. So if you're into that kind of thing, please do stay tuned. Okay, so I'm playing in 111 beats per minute today. Uh, ambient techno can be anywhere between 105 and 120. Real techno is like 120 to 135. So your mileage may vary, um, but I'm playing in 111 and I'll be playing in G minor. Okay, so I've got a rack full of kick drums here. And what I'm gonna do is just create a MIDI clip here and I'm gonna draw some four on the floor down. So I'm gonna lay my kick drums down by switching my fixed grid to quarter notes and just going ahead and just punching in four kick drums all the way across and hitting play. That sounds good. At this point, you can workshop different tempos if you want. We can move up to 119, down to say 105, a little bit slower. We'll stick to 111 for now. You can play with different kick drum styles. Again, I've got this full kick rack. This is from the Triaz collection. That sounds pretty good. I think I'll go with the first one though. Very nice. Okay, so now that we got our kick drum laid in, I'm gonna lower the gain down, do a little gain staging. There we go, maybe turn off the EQ shape I have here. I'll turn it back on. There we go. Okay, now I've got a full rack here of hi-hats, right? Um, these are just random hi-hats I've had in my sample library. So what I'm gonna do is draw in another MIDI clip. And with this one, uh, I know that my kick drum is falling at the one, the one, two, the one, three, and the one, four, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay in some hi-hats just by you know offsetting this. So it's not gonna fall where the kick drum's falling. It's gonna fall sort of offset from that. So I'll just kind of draw in some hi-hats here. And then you can switch it to 16th notes and then I'll just kind of draw in some other accent notes here. Maybe just kind of spray it along. That looks good. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this sounds. Let's go ahead and play on this one. That's cool. Again, your mileage may vary. You can draw in as much detail as you want here. But because they're not falling exactly where the kick is falling every time, it kind of sounds cool. I like that. Excellent. And now we'll draw in some snares. So I've got a full rack full of snares here. <laughs> just some random snares. Uh, let's go ahead and draw in some snares here. Again, the snare is just gonna go, let's switch it to eighth notes and the snare is just gonna go on. Let's find a nice tight one. That works. This is on one, two, one, four. There we go. And just hit play. Okay, cool. All right, now let's build a pad. And uh, ambient techno, of course, needs a pad, right? So what I'm gonna do is just build a pad from scratch. Now, this may go a little fast for you. However, I have tons of tutorials on my channel about how to build pads in pigments. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you the expedited version. What we're gonna do is switch the attack to around four seconds, decay it around the same, uh, lower the sustain down, and uh, up the release to about maybe five seconds. Adjust the attack curve, and what we're gonna do is switch the wavetable from basic waveforms to another wavetable. There's tons of wavetables in the factory library here. I'm gonna pick one that I made. We'll go with that one. That looks good. And what I like to do is change the filter over here from low pass 24 to low pass 12, lower down the cutoff, and uh, go ahead and just play in some notes. There we go. All right, that looks good. I think what I'll do for this is I will switch the second envelope, envelope two, I'll switch the attack to around maybe three seconds. Switch the decay around the same and maybe make a little bit of release and then adjust the attack curve. I'm gonna tie envelope two to the cutoff. So what I'll do is I'll drag envelope two over the cutoff. That looks good. So every time I play a note, it's gonna give me this little kind of mountain shape right here. And then I'll take an LFO and I'm gonna switch from the retrig source from poly keyboard to free running. I'll switch the rate from Hertz to straight only and make this two over one and then drag LFO one over to the position knob over here. So what we're getting is this. Oh yeah, very nice. Cool, this looks good. I'm gonna draw in a mini clip here, make this around say two bars. So I'll make our loop two bars, switch my fixed grid to two bars and uh, we'll zoom in here a little bit and draw in just a chord I'm playing. This is a minor chord with a low G2. There we go. And I have some delay and reverb here on send effects, which I will add like so. Oh yeah, 
This is my Valhalla delay here with the dotted eighth note dual delay. Go ahead and copy those settings if you like. And of course, my Fab Filter Pro R2 from Cinematic Space on Material. Okay, so we got a nice little start here. Can I come out from behind the curtain now? <laughs> We got a good little start here for ambient techno. Okay, so like I said, I've got a full PowerPoint planned here. Uh, you are activating producer mode and that's why you're here. You're here to learn, you're here to grow, and that's what we're here to do. So let's go ahead and switch over to the PowerPoint now. Top tips for producer mode, right? For ambient techno. Make a plan and stick to it. As you saw, I had a plan here, I stuck to it. So before producer mode hits, make a plan and stick to it. Staying focused is the key to following through on your plan. Concentrate on what you're trying to achieve and then get to know your personal workflow and then build on that for better results. So you saw what I just did here. In about five minutes, you know, we had nothing and then we had something, right? So I had the kick drum, we laid in the kick, laid into my hi-hats, snare drum, pad. Of course, we're not done yet, but you know, we're somewhere, okay? So that's my first tip for you is make a plan. Whether you have, you know, an idea of the kind of track you wanna do, maybe you have like something in mind, it's important to make a plan, all right? So let's go ahead and go back to our track here. And it sounds kind of dry right now. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna drag, you know, some effects over here. First thing I'm gonna grab is my glitch effects rack. I think I'll grab this over here. This is from my Patreon. I'll go ahead and explain this for you guys though. I'll get out of the way so I can explain it. This glitch rack consists of the Microfills preset from Ableton, okay? Uh, the Auto Pan plugin, a compressor, an LFO, and Automaton, which is free. So it really does kind of spice up those hi-hats. You can hear. Love this one. This is uh, free to all my Patreon subscribers. But you can easily build something like this. Microfills is default stock in Ableton Live, I think whether you have standard or sweet. So I've got this LFO that's kind of moving the interval here. You can see that. And uh, a little bit of auto pan on there, kind of spreading the hats out. Yeah, nothing crazy, nothing crazy, you know. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and put some bass in here. I think that's the next thing this track needs. Need some bass. All right. So we'll go ahead and add, let's first of all, rename this track. This is our pad. Put in a bass here and we'll grab pigments again. Love pigments, gotta love pigments. Does everything and we'll make a bass, okay? We're gonna make a bass out of, you know, basically just a sawtooth waveform. So you can go ahead and just move this to there. That's the sawtooth, that straight line. Position wise, that's around 6.66. Yeah, like right around there. Okay, cool. And we'll go ahead and just leave this, you know, pretty basic, no pun intended. And we will lower the decay down here a little bit, kind of make it like a pluck. Up the resonance, there we go. Maybe uh, take this down 12 semitones, okay? That's cool. Uh, we'll take a sine wave here as a sub oscillator. And we'll put that through just the direct out like that, very good. And that's looking good. I like that, I like where that's going. Um, this envelope, by the way, is tied to our filter now. That's cool. And what we'll do is just kinda draw in some notes. So we'll draw in like another MIDI clip, make this like eighth notes. We'll find, you know, put this in scale mode. Come down here to like, I don't know, G1. That sounds good. Spray some notes across. See how that lands. Not bad. Yeah, some delay to it. That's vibes. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> now back in uh, pigments, what you can do is just take another LFO here. And again, you don't want it poly keyboard because you don't want that LFO restarting every time. You want it free running. Switch it from Hertz to straight only. And we'll go down to say two over one. Again, kind of match our pad. Adjust the amount here. 
Oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's cool, right? So again, simple, simple sound design here. Sawtooth, 24 low pass filter, right? Add some resonance, uh, very simple. Envelope design, nothing crazy. Add a second envelope, right? And it's just, you know, this envelope two is just pinging the filter every single time that hits, right? You could add like a multi-band compressor here, spice it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh yeah. Nice. Cool. That sounds great. I'm happy with that. All right, cool. So again, going back to our first point, make a plan and stick to it. That's exactly what we did. We had something in mind. We brought it to life. Our track is taking shape. This is sounding good. All right, point number two. Learn the art of frequency separation. Some of you know what this means, some of you don't. That's why I'm here, all right? Frequency separation is separating different elements across the entire frequency spectrum. Compose with the frequency separation in mind and learn to use minimalism wherever you possibly can, all right? So let your compositions breathe and allow space to happen. Now, when we talk about frequency separation, a lot of people are like, eh, I don't even know what that means, Chris. Like, what, what is that all about? Frequency separation is literally taking different parts of your track and spreading it across the entire frequency spectrum. Well, if you don't even know what the frequency spectrum is, let me show you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take a free plugin called Span, and I'm gonna place it on my main fader here, okay? So as you can see, the bass and the kick are down here. Our pad is here. You can see the harmonics working right in the middle and our hi-hats are here. And the reason why I brought this point up now is because we have really good frequency separation because the bass lives over on the left. The pads live in the middle. The hi-hats live on the right. That's just physics, right? But it sounds clear. Okay, we're not muddying this thing up. We're not going crazy. Now, it's not like you can't touch these zones ever again, right? It is what it is. But I really want you to be mindful of this because a lot of times, you know, we put too much, especially with ambient, techno, it doesn't matter what kind of music it is really. We put too much in the middle here from 600 to like 3K. I call that the trouble zone. Like it's, it's a hot zone. There's so many elements that fall right in that range. You really gotta be mindful of it, okay? I think the pad is probably hitting a little bit too hard, so I'll probably pull the pad back. Let's rein it in a little bit, okay? There we go. And pull on that cutoff filter, maybe add some more reverb. I like that bass though. Ooh, that is good. That is really good. So I'm always thinking about this. I'm always thinking about where my elements are falling, you know, where where are the lines of separation? Like you can't, you know, have to like EQ everything with like a, you know, 96 dB filter, right? You don't have to do that. Um, but just be mindful of it, you know? That's that's point number two. Okay, let's go ahead and name this space. Oh yeah, space. All right, I like that. Okay, now let's add a sequence, okay? Let's add a sequence, but let's see where that sequence is gonna fall. I'm really interested in how this is gonna happen. All right, so what we're gonna do, let's grab pigments again. <laughs> I know it's kind of boring, but it's, it's fun. It's fun to kind of, you know, stick to one synth and see how much you can get out of it. See how much mileage you can get out of a synth, right? I love to do that. So it's one of my favorite exercises is to you do like the one synth challenge. You know what I'm saying? Um, all right, cool. So what we're gonna do is design a simple pluck. And this pluck, we're gonna drive with a sequencer, okay? So we're gonna make this the same way we made our bass basically, all right? We're gonna take the sustain out of it right away. We're gonna make our decay around maybe one second, okay? We'll make a second envelope lower the decay to about half as much and take that envelope and tie it to the filter, okay? So we're gonna pull the filter back, tie it to the filter, there we go. We can change our basic waveform here to something that's in the factory library, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna grab one that I made again, um, that's cool. And what we can do is take this second envelope and tie it to the position knob. And now what's gonna happen is every single time that pluck happens, it's gonna move the position, right? Which is cool. We can also take an LFO, just like we did before, and make it free running and say straight only, I don't know, four over one, and we'll tie that to the position as well. So not only is the position slider moving up and down, it's also ping, it's gonna ping every time that we play a note, which is cool, it's what we want. 
Um, we can take that same envelope. Did I already do that? Yeah, I already did that. We can take that same LFO and tie it to the cutoff as well. All right. We'll change this engine to wavetable as well. Make this a sawtooth. Okay. Now they're both going through filter one. That's good. We like that. And uh, yeah, we're almost done actually. Um, very simple pluck design. Okay. So we'll put that through the synth bus. And now, before we even add any notes to it, let's come over to the one and only HB, Harmony Bloom. And uh, let's make a sequence. A lot of people are like, how do you make sequences that sound straight in Harmony Bloom? Let me show you. Okay. So what we're gonna do is maybe make like a six note sequence here. And we'll make, we'll put this in G minor. G pentatonic minor, minor. Okay, this is cool. And we'll make the loop length faster, okay? Let's make it like 1-8. Oh no, okay, that's too fast. That's too fast, too. One. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so you can kind of imagine what this is gonna sound like now, okay? You can also come over here to the settings and change the octave of each of the trigger bars, which I thought is kind of cool. Like, the fact that he even thought of doing that, like that's pretty cool. So we can come over here and say, all right, let's make this plus 12, all right? So now one trigger bar is an octave up, the other trigger bar is behind it. So we're gonna get kind of a contrast here, okay? I kind of like this. Change our quantized note duration. Like, I don't know, one eighth. That's cool. I like this. This might be going a little too fast. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll test it out. We'll test it out at one. If it's too fast, we'll go two. Okay, cool. All right, let's go ahead and tie now Harmony Bloom. Harmony Bloom is running. We'll just say, all right, we have our pluck here. Again, I've designed this totally blind. I haven't even listened to it yet. And we'll just say MIDI from HB. And we'll say Harmony Bloom and put it in. That's kind of cool. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I like that. Let's go back to Harmony Bloom. That is melodic. If I've ever heard something melodic, I mean. So I think the key was was like putting this second trigger bar, number six, in a higher octave and only making it six notes, so right? it's only six notes. I mean, that just makes me want to dance. Like, it's cool. <laughs> That's dope. Make sure you get your loop length right. You know, if it's too fast, too fast, too slow, too slow. Uh, this is just one of the ways you can use Harmony Bloom. I really love it for abstract stuff. I've been doing a lot of like minimal ambient lately with like Harmony Bloom, just kind of doing crazy things. And But it can also be a straight, you know, sequencer which is cool, love it. All right, so I think we nailed that home. Let's go back and look at our span before we go on to the next point. We got our pad in the middle. You can see when that sequence starts to come in. It kind of encroaches on that pad, but the way we design our pluck fills the rest of it in. Like, I like that, I'm happy. Are you guys happy? I'm happy. <laughs> Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Point number three, turn your weaknesses into strengths. As a producer, turning your weaknesses into strengths can completely change the way you create music. If you're not good in any one area, focus on it and build confidence so you can make more progress in the areas you do excel at. Don't give up, all right? This comes from personal experience. I remember when I first started, like one of my biggest, I don't know how to say this, weaknesses was I never could finish a track. Like I would start a track and I'd get to like this point and I'd be like, oh yeah, cool. Like, I don't know what to do now. Like the, the rest of the part is hard. Like I don't want to do all the hard stuff. So I'd stop and be like, let's go back to the beginning again and start over. But then I sort of forced myself to just push forward. And that's how I turn. And then I realized that I'm actually kind of good at it. And that's how I turned something that I was weak at into one of my strengths. 
So now when I reach that point where I'm like, oh, this is getting kind of difficult, I, I lean into it and I go, all right, getting difficult, keep going, keep going, push yourself. So whether that's sound design, you're not good at it, push yourself. If it's mixing, push yourself further, try again. Maybe it's even mastering, right? And you're like, I don't know how to master. Learn how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like teach yourself, focus on the things that you feel are weaknesses and then turn those into strengths because then you can add those back into your tool belt, if you will, you'll be well on your way, okay? So, as you saw in the track, you know, something like this, like, oh, I don't get Harmony Bloom, dude, that's super simple. Six notes, quantize offset, no problem. Again, sound design, it doesn't have to be crazy complicated. It can be easy. Simple. <laughs> wavetable, wavetable, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> easy, right? Anyway, keep it simple. Okay, cool, I'm happy with this. Where can we go with this? Well. We can also have some accent pieces here. I think that's really important. If you want to like do ambient techno, you know, let's call this a pluck. It should have some element of surprise, you know? Some other kind of cool thing. So let's do that. Let's do that. I love sequences. We already made one, but let's make one that kind of embellishes the whole thing and guides the whole track along, okay? Let's do that. So let's grab pigments again. I should just label this whole tutorial pigments <laughs> in pigments because it's awesome nah you guys have it you love it i know you do all right um let's do something like this let's do a wave table okay and what we'll do is this wave table will kind of move and rotate in a way we'll just kind of make this never hitting the same thing so what we'll do is we'll take uh an lfo and we'll put it in free running We'll take both of these free running LFOs and we'll put them, we'll leave them in Hertz, okay? HZ. And one will be kind of fast, one will be kind of slow. And we'll come over to the Combinate and we'll combine these two LFOs. So we'll say, all right, LFO one is gonna be our source, LFO two is gonna be our modification. And we will multiply them and turn up the amount. Now you can see we have a multiplied LFO, which is creating sort of a random LFO. I love this shape. And you can see both of them are now active. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's take LFO three. Same result. Cool, I like that. All right, we'll use that, combinate, see it's blank right now, but we can drag it over to the position or a wave table. There we go, excellent. And now we'll do the same pluck thing, okay? And we will ping our filter with envelope two. There we go. Very nice. And we'll put this one onto, say, wave table. Excellent. Getting deep in the game here. And we'll use that same combinate. Actually, it's a little fast. So maybe we'll make another combinate. How about that? We'll take LFO one, make it free running, make it super slow and we'll multiply that with LFO two. So we'll say, all right, let's multiply LFO one with LFO two, turn up the amount. There we go. Nice, slow, slow combinate. And we will move our filter with that. Okay, great. So now we got some nice random motion going. We can also tie our velocity to the filter like this. All right, great. Let's grab stepping. Why not? Why not? Turn off pigments for a second. Grab Stepic. Now again, the way you use Stepic may not be the way I use Stepic. I use the Max for Live version of Stepic because I'm in Halo Live, obviously. But you know, your mileage may vary. It's still the same, same plugin. All right. One eighth, eight notes, and we'll just draw in a simple sequence. Make this say G3 natural minor. Same thing. Um, we can dice this if we want, or maybe make some of these halftime. These are gonna be 50% 50 chances that they're gonna be on or off. We can randomize this by using the purple dice over here. 
So as you can see, our octaves are now randomized. I only have a plus one on one of them, which means it's gonna be pretty much the same, but then every once in a while, we're gonna get that random odd plus one octave. We'll randomize this, randomize the velocity, because I tied velocity to the cutoff filter just a second ago. And uh, maybe we'll make another divider here and randomize that. Okay, cool. Are we ready? Are we ready to rock? All right. Let's turn this up, turn up some delay and reverb. Turn on the gain here and hit play. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I love it when a good plan comes together. Point number one, make a plan and stick to it. <laughs> I love it when that division happens. That's called ratcheting. Very tangerine dreamlike. Mmm, so nice. Okay, so let's just go back and, you know, review. So, again, we use the combinate here on the wavetable position. So it's never really hitting the, hitting the same location on that wavetable. That's great. The filter is being modulated not only with the envelope and velocity, but also that second combinate that we made that's a little bit slower. Kind of moving it around, love that. Simple sawtooth just for, you know, punch. And uh, yeah, stepic, doing its stepic thing. Kind of giving us some off notes sometimes, giving us some division, giving us an octave every once in a while. Nice and random. I love it. Combine that with a Harmony Bloom sequence. <laughs> Ambient techno. All right, last point, point number four. If you weren't in producer mode yet, you should be right now. All right, feel the fear and do it anyway. This is an old quote from a book in 1987. I forgot what the book's name was, but a lot of you know motivational speakers have kind of like paraphrase this, but the actual quote is, feel the fear and do it anyway. The old saying still remains true, especially when it comes to music production. If you let fear limit your progress, then you'll never know how far you can go. Set your goals higher than you think and eliminate feelings of doubt by achieving those goals. So let me pause right there. Set your goals higher than you think, right? and then you'll start to eliminate those feelings of doubt. However, I want you to set realistic goals. Don't like say, ah, oh, I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna manifest, you know, a Grammy album like tomorrow. Like it's not gonna happen tomorrow. But if you just say to yourself, I'm just gonna produce like one track by the end of the week. That's a good goal to have, you know? You, I, I could produce a track in like a day or two. But like for you, like a week, cool. A month, great. Whatever your timeline is, doesn't matter but you should absolutely set realistic goals because then once you achieve those goals, your mind is gonna go, okay, I did that. And it's gonna start stacking. You're gonna be like, oh, maybe I got one track. Maybe I can make a EP, right? And release that EP on Bandcamp. And maybe somebody can listen to my music who's never heard of me before. You know what I'm saying? Like, so this is how these things kind of compound. So I want you to set those goals higher than you think, but then start achieving them realistically. And what you're gonna find is all that doubt and all that fear that was built up, like I could never do this, I, I'm, ne I'm not good at this, it's just gonna go away. It kind of, that's why point three leads into point four. And this is why you're entering producer mode is because you're gonna start breaking down these barriers to get you to where you wanna go. That's what this whole channel is about. If you can do this, producer mode will be activated and you'll start to shift into your new reality, okay? I know that's kind of a plot twist at the end. However, we built an ambient techno track from scratch. You saw how I did it, okay? But this effect on you is taking you from maybe someone who's a beginning producer, maybe someone who just wanted to learn how to produce a genre, and you're starting to think about things. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm, <laughs> I'm just you pushed out. <laughs> I'm like, hey, on your shoulder going, dude, you can do this. This is all within the realm of your possibility. So take this opportunity, grasp it, do whatever you need to do to get to where you wanna go. That's the main point of this video. So if 
you got some from this video, if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments down below. Feel free to check out my Patreon. I've got tons of extra tutorials on there. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I just released a brand new course, Mixing and Mastering for Ambient Music. So you wanna check that out, it's in the Patreon shop. Uh, join our community on Discord. We got a wonderful community over on Sephara. So many exciting things happening in my world. So I want you to be a part of it. So anyway, thank you for your time, attention, energy, and presence. I truly enjoyed having you here today. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you again soon. I'll meet you down there in the comments section. And uh, yeah, take good care, you guys. And as always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. My name is Chris from Signs of Life. And I'll see you guys in the next video.